Hello everyone and welcome to the second semi-final matchup of the Vainglory Collegiate Star League playoffs. My name is Tasty Bacon. I am your host and caster for tonight as I have been all season long here in the Vain Glory Collegiate Star League. And we are just about ready to get underway for our second semifinal matchup. We saw in our first semifinals it was American River College continuing their absolute dominance over the rest of the Collegiate League. And, and this time it is going to be University of Florida looking to keep their undefeated streak alive as well as they will be taking on the team from the school of University California Merced as I'm being told is the proper pronunciation for it uh, may still be butchering it but you know what that's not what's important what's important is that these teams are ready to go for this semifinal matchup the winner will be facing off against American River College which is uh, you were said has already played against American River and well they fell to them the same as all other opponents have University of Florida they're going to be looking to keep that undefeated streak going and try and face off against American River in the grand finals we'll see which of these two teams will be able to pull it off in a best of three series for those of you who may be unfamiliar with the collegiate star league it is a esports league for college level vein or this one is for vainglory but college level esports players all across the country across multiple platforms league of legends dota 2 csgo there's all sorts of different events happening uh, within Collegiate Star League. Make sure you head on over to cstarleague.com in order to get all the information. And if you're a in college, do go ahead and sign up for next season, which does begin in January. It's a very short off-season turnaround time here at the Collegiate Star League, so you do not want to miss out on that opportunity. For now, though, we are going to take a very brief break and when we come back, we will be getting underway for game number one of this best of three series. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be very, very brief. We've got all the players already in the lobby and ready to go. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon. Well, let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together. All right. Well, there we go. We've got everyone in the lobby. Teams are readying up right now as we speak. And well, once we do get, uh, actually looks like one disconnect just happened right quick. But uh, hopefully they'll be able to get themselves reconnected before we uh, obviously get underway. Not going to have a two versus three in uh, the, such an important matchup. So uh, as soon as they get back on, we'll be able to start up the draft and get on in for game number one. But for now... Uh, just looking back at the season both of these teams have had, as mentioned, University of Florida still undefeated. They went through the five-week season, four matches against uh, opponents in their same division and one bye week. They were 4-0 in those matches, 5-0 with the bye week. UC Merced, they were 3-1, and their one loss coming at the hands of American River, who has just kind of dominated all opposition. As you can hear, we do have the draft getting underway for game number one of this matchup. And so we'll bring that right on over to you. You can see there the matchup. University of Florida, UC Merced. The first ban is actually going to be Flicker. It is University of Florida on the blue side, UC Merced on the red. Kestrel ban coming out for Merced. And there's going to be the Lance pickup as the first pick coming out from Florida. Now, the rosters for these two teams for the University of Florida, it is Vulcan Voltage, Legend of Goat, 
and Tyrant rounding out their roster over on the side of UC Merced. We have Brennan 05, Iniesta 8, and Cruz for Cross rounds out their roster. And we've got a couple more picks coming through the Celeste and the Catherine. It'll be interesting to see how those go into the Lance. Obviously, you don't want to give your entire hand away early if your uh, carries. You want to allow yourself to have that little bit of a counter pick with that final pick. So Gwen going to be the next pick up here. Gwen can actually do really well into the Celeste, but can struggle against Catherine. Catherine is a very strong pickup into these sort of late game hyper carries. But the pedal coming out from the side of Florida. That's going to be an interesting one. We saw a pedal earlier today. Didn't do terribly great, but we also saw a couple of pedal pickups at the Vainglory World Championship uh, just this past weekend and had some great success Swap there. Heroes. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how the pedal does here in this first game of the best of three. We'll get that draft screen out of your way so you can take a look at those hero compositions okay, as the players that. make a couple of swaps for themselves. And then without uh, much further ado, we're going to be going ahead and getting on into the Halcyon Fold for game number one of the semi-finals matchup. Let's see. I, just going off of the draft, I don't know. I have to give the advantage to UC Merst. I like their what their composition can do a little bit better. Uh, obviously, it's not to say that they're guaranteed a win, but... Uh, the pedal, while strong, I just feel like can be dealt with quite easily by uh, the Celeste is going to have a really strong time clearing out those Munions. The Glaive may struggle a little bit early on uh, if the positioning of the pedal is on point, but the other problem that I do foresee for Florida could be this Gwen. It's such a late game oriented pickup. And if you can't survive long enough for the Gwen to become this monster powerhouse of a carry, well, then you're just going to be in a lot of trouble. Early rotation coming out, actually, from UC Merced is they're going to be finding a little bit of an invade here, see if they can get enough damage down. But it looks like Tyrant is actually going to be trying to return some damage there. He's going to be eating a lot. Will actually be very likely a first blood. One more attack from Iniesta. Actually, it's Brennan. That secures that kill. But first blood going over to UC Merced. As they're going to be able to find that kill. That early three-man rotation does pay off for them. And Vulcan Voltage in the lane. Starting to fall behind already. And to fall behind in CS this early on. Normally not the biggest of deals. But it's actually by a pretty significant amount considering how few minions have actually gone through the lane uh, and that's a worrying sign you definitely want to see vulcan voltage improve on those last hitting mechanics in order to keep up with a celeste uh, celeste who's going to have a very easy time farming once she gets another item or two under her belt and farming in bunches However, as we do take a look down towards the jungle, you see lots of early vision being prioritized by the University of California as they have quite a few scout traps already down. A couple of them were even popped already and just constantly wanting to make sure they know where their opponents are so they know when they can go for these aggressive moves in the lane. When you have a glaive, you know that's just an automatic, we want to be aggressive in the lane. You want to look for those early kills, those afterburn ganks are so extremely effective. And against a Gwen, you know, it can be a little bit tougher to connect. You have that skedaddle that can help to survive those ganks, but if is gonna be able to get this ball rolling, up in the lane, they should have a pretty nice go of things, at least in the early stages of the game. See, Tyrant's going to actually be having to spend quite a bit of time up here babysitting, but if he's the one that gets caught out, it's not going to help the team. That is a very quick pickup there by UC Merced. A very, uh, very heads-up play from Iniesta to recognize that Tyrant was actually a little bit too far forward and was vulnerable to eating that afterburden and getting caught out of position. Is going to allow Inyes to just have some free farming. I'm a little bit surprised that they haven't tried to make any moves into the enemy jungle. 
because they've been able to find these two quick kills they have the damage advantage early on is at least is what it looks like from these last couple these you know the two little skirmishes that we've had and so i feel like that early aggression could actually pay off for or said if they were looking to go for it however right now they may just be doing so because both of these teams they see where each other are but crucifer cross is actually the one taking most of the damage for now we'll see if iniesta does try and turn this one around the lane however is going to be a little bit of a skirmish as well a nice core collapse onto vulcan voltage will get that stun and force vulcan away quite a bit you know it's going to be down about half health and very low on energy as well could be tough for this gwen to stick around cruiser cross is going to get that one stack on the heroic perk for Catherine with that stun but all in all a a relatively passive start obviously we did have those two kills but i feel like if the opportunities are there for iniesta to try and make even more happen here in the early goings if they want to make a move into the lane and even into the enemy jungle uh they they should be able to pull off those kinds of moves at the moment but they're opting to instead stick to their own side of the map for the most part and i mean in the lane there's looks like florida wants to set something up onto brennan will it be able to get that impale though there's the recall this is the time to go in for it but they're actually not really gonna be going at the same time tyrant is not going to hit that impale like that was a big mistake from florida tyrant needs to be the one to make that decision to go in and make that call to look for the kill it's the entire engagement relies on the impale connecting from this lance and so if tyrant is not the first one to show that aggression we're just gonna get exactly what we just saw there brennan able to spot out that there's company in the lane and just immediately back away avoid taking too much damage as a result and they're actually just going to have Brennan duck down and grab one of those treants in order to stay topped off and avoid having to go back to lane. This allows them to not only get control over the lane, but also get pushed in and make sure Vulcan Voltage is not going to have an easy time farming these minions underneath this turret. You can see a lot of Helios getting dropped down just to keep this pressure on, even getting a little bit of damage done in the process. This is going to pull Legends of Goat up into the lane as well. Could they get a really big skirmish here, but it looks like Glaive has just decided, okay, you know what, we're not going to find a whole lot here in the lane. I'll steal away your jungle instead. Gets that mid-treant. Is now going to be on the run a bit, though. We'll be running right into Vulcan Voltage. It does have that afterburn in a couple seconds, though. We should be able to get away from this. Cruise for Cross is actually going to make sure that Iniesta is able to get away from this without even having to use the afterburn. But now Cruise for Cross is the one that goes down. Iniesta tries to go back in, but that's a big mistake. Numbers game catching up to UC Merced there. And honestly, Iniesta would have been fine. Iniesta had an afterburn coming up. Cruise for Cross didn't really have to go in there to try and make that save. And ends up costing both of them their lives because Iniesta then makes the mistake of trying to go in and save Cruz for Cross after they got caught. So definitely uh, a lapse of judgment there from the side of UC Merced, but great job by California or by Florida in order to capitalize on that mistake, grab those two kills, and unfortunately for them didn't really get a whole lot off of those kills, just kind of uh, went back to farming uh, and it's going to make sure that this gold lead stays right about where it was. Just about a 500 gold lead or so in favor of UC Merced. So for now, Shatter Glass first item completed for Brennan. There's the alternating current done for Legend of Goat. Vulcan Voltage still looking for that first tier 3. Actually has enough gold to finish off the Sorrow Blade, assuming that's what the first tier 3 item will be. So once Vulcan is able to get down to the shop, we'll see a lot of parity in terms of the relative strength. But right now, the advantage does go over to University of California. If they were to try and pull the trigger right now, they would have that slight item lead. But it's very difficult to lock down this team. 
between the trampoline jumps, the lance just being incredibly slippery by default, especially now that he's level 6, has that combat roll. And of course, the Gwen having that skedaddle. It's it's tough to actually secure a kill here in the lane, but they're looking for it on the Tyrant. going to land the Core Collapse and the Afterburn, and that will be enough to pick up the kill. The Solar Storm goes through onto Vulcan as well, but now they're just going to be looking to... Wow, that Helio actually supernova proc hitting both Vulcan and Legend. That may actually prompt the side of UC to stick around a bit longer here in this lane. But while this is happening, Iniesta looking to steal away the jungle, but he waits too long. Was trying to pass it over to Brennan in order to return some energy to that lane carry. But waited too long, Legend of Goat just hops on over and says, Thank you very much for the leash. I'll take that camp from here. Three to two in terms of kills. Gold is still slightly growing in favor of UC Merced. As they are up to a little over a thousand gold lead in their favor. But it's not really any decisive plays happening from either side. It's mostly just the, the farming ability is what's setting these two teams apart in terms of gold. Legend of Goat is going to get collapsed on, is going to get taken out here. Iniesta is very low, but don't they don't have enough damage to finish him off. Fountain of Renewal. Alright, well, we're back up after a complete crash of our system here, but we missed out on a few kills. It's four to four. Four kills a piece now. A gold is has been completely evened up as a result of the last couple minutes that were unfortunately missed on the stream due to that crash, but looks like the side of Florida managed to find a little bit of footing underneath them and grabbed themselves a couple kills, grabbed themselves some gold, and are now gonna be looking to try and gain an advantage. But again, that farm difference is just really massive. I mean, 107 to 142 in the lane. Even in the jungle, it's 54 to 66, uh, which is this time in favor of Florida. So that's why they're able to stay close in this game for now. But Vulcan Voltage really falling far behind Brennan in terms of that lane CS. And that could be a problem. It's going to delay that late game scaling for this hyper quick carry Gwen by quite a bit. And uh, you know, could be a troublesome. And thankfully for them, they aren't really f like falling behind in terms of other objectives. They aren't getting destroyed. They aren't getting pushed around the map. But the fact that Vulcan Voltage has been uh, falling behind in terms of farm, that's worrying. Especially you know when you look forward to potential finals matchups, Vulcan Voltage. I mean that's something that's going to be absolutely torn apart by a team like American River. If someone falls behind in CS at all, they just really may emphasize that deficit and become absolutely merciless. For now, Tyrant going to be going in, getting a little bit of damage. Nice Githian wall. There's going to be a big afterburn here. The Solar Storm is not going to connect. Legend of Goat will actually be able to get out of there, especially with that Fountain of Renewal coming through. And ends up being no kills thus far. Although there was a lot of very close calls on the side of Florida. You see Merced almost finding themselves a couple different kills in that skirmish. But we're just going to be kind of resetting a bit here. Tyrant still a little bit above half health. But Brennan and Cruz for Cross, they were pretty much untouched during that. It was Iniesta the only member that really took any significant damage on the red side. As we just continue on along, we're approaching the 15 minute mark, Kraken will be spawning here in just about 10 seconds. That's going to be a really big objective. Neither team has been able to crack that first turret just yet, which is really key. You know, when you have Kraken, a lot of times you want to make sure you have that first turret destroyed already because it's such an easy turret to take relative to the others that it almost feels like a bit of a waste to make your Kraken have to take the damage while dealing with that first turret. So we'll see if either side is able to win a fight. If they do, go ahead and make 
that kind of push, you know, send two members to take on Kraken while one of them pushes the lane type of deal. That's what I would expect, but a lot of vision control coming up from both sides. They both would be wanting to get an idea of where their opponents are at all times. For now, just going to continue to farm up and look for those next tier 3 items. In the lane, you've got Brennan sitting on the Shatterglass, Broken Myth, and Eve of Harvest. That's about as powerful as this Celeste is going to get. You might see one other offensive item added into the inventory, but I would expect a couple of defensive items to be prioritized. Meanwhile, over on the other side, Gwen only sitting on the Sorrow Blade and the Breaking Point. So still has a lot of room to improve there. The Glaive down in the jungle, Sorrow Blade Bone Saw. Not too often that we get to see a bone saw coming out. Uh, the item was nerfed a patch or two ago. Really fell out of favor with a lot of carries. And uh, well, we'll see. Obviously, Iniesta wants to be doing as much damage as possible and feels like breaking down that armor is the way to go. Meanwhile, for the pedal, it is that alternating current broken myth. I would be very surprised if we don't see either a frostburn or a shiver steel come out for the pedal as well just to add uh, some extra slows on top of what the team is trying to do obviously you've got plenty of crowd control with the lance and gwen has a good solid slow of her own you add a little bit onto the pedal and you become very difficult to deal with vulcan voltage gonna get caught out a bit here nice afterward will knock vulcan back towards the team and they have enough to pick up the kill tyrant is going to fall as well I oh, know he's not going to fall. Actually, he's able to get out of here alive for now. But that one kill picked up. What are they going to make happen off of this? Looks like they tr want to try and get in onto Legend of Goat if they can. Legend of Goat playing very defensively. And Tyrant hanging out to make sure that they don't get that engagement. So it'll just be a rotation down into the jungle. Stealing away some camps. And just looking to regroup a bit here. For the side of UC Merced, Halcyon Chargers finished. There's an Atlas Pauldron as well in order to try and slow down the attacks coming out of, honestly, both Gwen and Petal, but primarily for Gwen. Who, again, once she gets to that late game powerhouse status, and we know that she can get there. It's just a matter of how, of how quickly you can get there and you know how far gone a game might be by the time you get there but right now the game is not far gone at all the game is still very much up in the air and this Gwen again one more item I feel like uh, looking very likely towards a Tyrant's monocle could be all that's needed they catch out Cruiser Cross a little bit here with that ace is high that's not the target they are looking for Brennan on the back lines untouched Big Solar Storm wiping. See Merced Tyrant doesn't land the Impale, but it did at least hit some minions so he doesn't get stuck in place, or that could have been a second kill going over easily. Vulcan Voltage gonna try and make a play happen, is gonna get stunned up by the Afterburn, but doesn't uh, take any follow-up damage. In fact, you know, starting to get to that late game status, gets a lot of damage dealt to Cruise for Cross and Iniesta. And with those recalls coming through, this could actually be a chance for Vulcan and Tyrant to get some strong damage onto this tier 1 turret. They could be the first ones to take down a turret, and they are going to be the first ones to take a turret down in the game. That is going to open up the map quite a bit for the University of Florida. As they will now have a little bit easier access to the enemy jungle. The enemy can't fall back, has to fall back even further. If they do need to fall back to that safe space underneath the next turret. And we'll see if University of Florida takes advantage of the situation. Gets some vision put down around the middle of the map. Tries to take control over the Kraken area. Oh, but Vulcan Voltage, you need to be careful. You cannot be on your own. And they aren't going to be able to capitalize on it just yet. But an afterburn knocks Vulcan Voltage out from the turret. Uses that reflex block and the skedaddle in order to get out to safety. Some good damage returned, but the Solar Storm, Brennan, finding another kill. This has just been a constant problem for the University of Florida to deal with, is the Solar Storm's late game from a Celeste. Gets a couple stacks of a Broken Myth, 
and then just fires that ultimate out and tears through their opponents. Iniesta is going to be taken down here, but the turret should be falling. Never mind, the members of UC Merced are not working on that turret at all. They give up two kills. This could be a disaster. They are going to take out Cruz for Cross. It is a triple kill for Legend of Goat on the pedal and an ace absolute disaster for UC Merced. They were under that first turret. They could have taken the turret down. Instead, not only do they not get the objective, they give up the ace. That's going to mean the Kraken going over as well. As no one is going to be up in time to try and stop this one, especially once the Gwen comes and joins the party. Oh, what a turnaround for the University of Florida. Now 7-7. Seven to seven. The gold is just about even as well. And it's going to be Kraken unleashed in their favor. Well, let's see how much work they can get done with it. Let's see infusions coming out across the board for the members of University of Florida. There's only one infusion on the side of UC Merced, and that could be something that comes back to bite them if they are not able to go and pick those up soon. They have enough gold for them, but they are looking to defend this Tier 2 turret instead. This could be trouble. And Petal Munions are going to be actually getting taken out pretty quickly here because of the nature of sieging, and they're looking to get into the Legend of Goat. The Brennan, though, is not able to get that Solar Storm onto the targets they're looking for. Vulcan Voltage and Legend of Goat are both very low. However, Kraken is still making her way in towards the base. Legend of Goat just trying to get those monies back up, but gets taken out by Brennan. And now Tyrant is going to be a Sacrificial Lamb as well. Vulcan Voltage does survive, but Kraken is going to get this Tier 3 turret. Two turrets completed on this push. Uh, it's not the best of pushes that you could have gotten this late into the game, but... I think they will definitely be happy to take this trade over on the side of University of Florida. As that does get them quite a bit of gold for those two turrets. It allows them to finish off maybe a couple more items. But Brennan05, absolutely MVP of UC Merced right now, has been able to find these plays. And this is, again, we're getting to that point where the trouble with Petal can come through is once those minions get cleared out when you're trying to siege up on a turret like that Celeste is going to clear out those minions so quickly and once the minions on a crystal petal are gone the petal's effectiveness is significantly reduced that's exactly what we saw in that last siege and skirmish that went the way of UC Merced Right now, oh, they're not going to spot that scout trap. So, UC Merced knows exactly where they are right now. Saw them go into this brush. Are now going to see them enter the next side of it and have not seen them leave this brush. So, they still know they're up here in the lane. The minions also going to be providing some of that vision. But lots of scout traps were put down by Cruise for Cross with that contraption after that last fight. So, that was very smart. They're going to clear out these minion waves. And they still have some vision over where University of Florida is. Are they going to look for a pick? Or do they want to just get this wave pushing up and maybe set up an ambush here? Cruise for Cross obviously spotted as he was stepped on that scout trap. But now they have an opportunity. They know where Tyrant is. The Blast Tremor is going to get this place and doesn't hit the targets they're looking for. Here comes the Solar Storm. It does hit all three members. But not enough to take anyone down. And Yesta is going to fall. But so is Petal. And so is the Gwen. It is now a two on one. Just Tyrant to try and defend. But he is taking so much damage. Will avoid the core collapse of that combat roll. That does not knock them away far enough with that Githian. Can they find this kill? Brennan really wants this. But he's going to get just too far away. However, minions on this turret. I wouldn't be surprised if they just turn around. Take this tier 2 turret and then turn their attention towards the Kraken. A very hectic fight, but at the end, it is a 2 for 1 in favor of UC Merced. There's the turret going down. Here is the Kraken start. It is just the Lance for 10 more seconds. We'll see if he can make a hero play. He's going to have to move very quick if he wants to do though, because Brennan is just tearing through this Kraken with the help of the Storm Crown from Cruise for Cross. They 
get the Kraken. He's not able to respond in time. And now there's a chance for UC Merced to try and siege up onto this Tier 3 turret of Florida. Very, very close game right now. Could go either way. Tyrant's going to get stunned up a little bit. Poor Collapse does not connect. But I feel like just with the Celeste, the Siege is a little bit better on the side of UC Merced. However, the Wave Clear is still fairly strong on the, from the members of University of Florida. But with Kraken pushing in, can they take it down? There is no Storm Crown, so they don't have that extra damage onto it. And it looks like Merced may be just looking to charge in onto these turrets. Look for a fight. Vulcan Voltage eats so much damage to start that off. Afterburn into a Solar Storm, but is able to get underneath these double turrets. Should be able to get to the... Uh, Sanctuary and get a little bit of healing, but this Kraken and UC Merced, they are just pushing relentlessly. Can Vulcan Voltage make a play happen with the help of Legend of Goat? The turret is down there onto the crystal. I don't think that they have enough damage to stop this. They do not, and UC Merced, they are going to take game number one in a 26 minute battle. They pick up the victory. And take a 1-0 lead in the series. So congratulations to them picking up that win. We'll see if they can. Uh, they're obviously going to want to make it a 2-0. And just finish things off. Set up a rematch with the members of. Uh, with the members of American River College. But. Obviously, University of Florida, that's their first loss on the season. They're going to be looking to come back strong and pick up victory. Force us to a game number three. We have yet to have a game three here in the playoffs. It's been straight two O's. But with that, we're going to go ahead and take a short break. When we come back, we'll be getting into game number two of the best of three semifinals. Only $14.99. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy.
All right, everyone, we are back and getting ready for game number two of this best of three. UC Merced, they have the 1-0 series lead. If they can pick up a second win here, they will take the series and win the semifinals, and they will be moving on to the grand finals where they await, where American River College is awaiting the winner of this series. So... As we get the ready checks going out to the teams, we will be getting underway in just a second here with Game 2's draft. And, well, there we go. You're going to hear it. There's the draft begins. University of Florida versus UC Merced. Merced has, as I mentioned, that 1-0 edge. And in the draft, Flicker and Lyra will be the two bands taken off the board. We'll see what the first pick here will be for Merced. Now that the teams have swapped sides, there it is, Merced on the blue with University of Florida on the red. Kestrel will be the first ban here, and they are just going to be answering with a Celeste. They said, well, we just lost to the Celeste. We'll try and win with the Celeste. Lance going to come through as well. University of Florida... Sort of uh, maybe trying to match the lineup that they just had to play against. Let's see if they do end up picking up the Glaive as their final pick. Actually, sorry, it was Lance was on the side of Florida last time. The games are all kind of running into one. There's going to be the Glaive coming out for UC Merced once more, pairing it with that Kestrel. What they decide to round out with. Will it be this fin coming through? We've seen a couple fins here already now in the collegiate Vainglory, which is a very stark contrast to the world championships that we just watched last weekend, where the fin was not picked or banned the entire weekend. However, it will be Arden and then a Rona for the side of University of Florida. They're going to be looking to secure that victory with some jungle power lance and rona it's a very strong duo we'll see if they can make it work and even up the series or will uc merced end up taking this one 2-0 and get that rematch with the only team to have given them a loss in the season against american river college that's what we're gonna find out as we load up onto the fold for game number two Iniesta, Brennan, and Cruz for Cross are going to be trying to find themselves a victory and punch their ticket to those finals with a Kestrel Glaive Arden as their composition. I'm going to be curious as to watching the build paths for the Kestrel and the Glaive. I would assume Glaive is going to go weapon power, but you never really know how a Kestrel is going to build until it actually, get, you know, the first few items do come out. I uh, could be seeing a double weapon composition for the side of UC Merced. Or it could be a Crystal Kestrel, which I, I don't actually want to see a Crystal Kestrel. As much as I love CP Kestrel in a BR, in an actual game, I don't feel like the Crystal Path is as strong. And yes, is going to get that afterburn onto Legend of Goat, but doesn't quite get the angle they were looking for. And that will allow the Celeste to survive. Uh, a little bit interesting to see that Legend of Goat and v uh, Vulcan Voltage swapping up roles here. As Vulcan was the laner in game number one with Legend of Goat playing that jungle pedal. But now they have swapped positions, putting Legend of Goat in the lane. Hoping to have a better standing against Brennan who was a farming powerhouse in game number one took a massive cs lead over their opponent and just was one of the large reasons why uc merced was able to pick up the victory in game number one we'll see how they do here in game number two already off to a uh, much better start in the lane for legend of goat sitting at uh, even cs at this point it was already about a four or five cs advantage for Brennan, so that's definitely good news if you are a fan of University of Florida. And 
I'll see another afterburn coming in, but once again, not going to be getting the hit that he was looking for. I believe actually afterburned a minion, which uh, makes that a little bit worse than just not getting the angle you're looking for. That feels bad, but looks like it will be a double weapon composition for UC Merced. As both Brennan and Iniesta have picked up an extra weapon blade and some attack speed in the, into their inventories. Meanwhile, over on the other side, it's a very tanky start for Vulcan Voltage to go along with a little bit of weapon power and picking up that armor early. Very smart choice, especially when you can recognize that your opponents are doing a double weapon composition. Just grab as much armor as you can early on in order to uh, help keep yourself alive. So, as the teams just continue farming up, it was a relatively passive game number one. It looks like we're going to be kind of in store for a little bit more of the same, at least in the early goings, even with the glaive. You know, has tried to make a couple of gank attempts into the lane, but has yet to find success in doing so. Let's see if uh, he's going to be able to make any of these plays happen, because that's one of the big keys to success if you have a Glaive on the team, is winning that early game. If you don't end up uh, getting yourself a nice, sizable advantage, you can have some serious struggles as you get into the mid to late game. So... For now, Iniesta just continuing to farm the jungle. Brennan actually taking a couple of these minions as well. Here's going to be the into the fray from Vulcan Voltage. They really want this fight, but it's Legend of Goat getting knocked in. Vulcan Voltage is still the one that's taking a lot of damage. Will be the first one to fall. Legend of Goat is very low as well. They should be able to finish that one off. Now Tyrant, the alone member left. Can they get this ace? The Githian Wall to try and delay, but it's not going to delay long enough. An ace coming out very early in the game for UC Merced as they pop a few scout traps. They're going to be able to get some serious damage done onto this first turret. Ace buff minions and of course those glimmer shots are going to just tear through the health of this turret. And because of the invade going on, they're not even going to try and stop this. Brennan's going to be able to take that turret for free. That is a very... Uh, very kind of miscalculation, I would say, from Florida. Even if your jungle's being invaded, you need to stop that turret going down. They would have been able to stop it going down quite easily if they just sent any of their members up into the lane in order to clear out those minions a little bit quicker. But instead, they tried to force you see Merced out of their jungle and lost the turret. Now they're going to be finding themselves in another fight. Legend of Goat's going to get stunned into the wall. And just like that, it's to make that three more kills for UC Merced. They find another ace, their second ace in just five minutes. They have really come out of the gate firing on all cylinders here in game number two. See how much damage they can get done to this tier two turret now. Respawn's still very, very short, obviously, only five minutes into this game. But with those ace buff minions, with those glimmer shots, Sorrow Blade already completed for the Kestrel. That is going to be a second turret, perhaps? No, they're not quite going to take it. They uh, pulled off the damage on the turret just a little bit too early, expecting the minions to finish it off. And the minions, they got distracted with other minions instead. And so that turret will be standing, but it is certainly on its last legs. All it will take is one little push from the side of UC Merced, and they will get that turret and an extra 900 gold for the team. As it stands right now, we're just six minutes into this one. Six kills for Merced and a 3,000 gold lead. Definitely looking good for them here in game number two. The Kestrel is just such a strong pick. There is a reason why Kestrel was 100% pick pan at the World Championship. The uh, was Kestrel and Lyra, the two that had the highest priority for the professional players all across the globe. And Brandon 05 just kind of solidifying why that maybe should be the case here in the collegiate level as well. Sitting at 3 0 and 2. 66 CS, 46 to Legend of Goat, so a 20 CS lead for Brennan, which just kind of become a trend of Brennan getting CS leads. And looks very strong in the lane. Let's see if they can find some damage on the Tyrant. 
And you do get one glimmer shot, but that's going to be about it. If they look for a push onto this turret, they should be able to just take it down very quickly. So, Florida, they need to be careful. They don't want to actually... I feel like they should just give up this turret because of how quickly it's going to go down. They can look for a fight immediately afterwards. That's exactly what they're doing. Is there going to be a gauntlet coming out? There it is. It gets blocked by Legend, but eaten by Vulcan Voltage. One shot, one kill will go through successfully as well. And it is a double kill for Brennan. And with just Legend of Goat to defend and fairly low on health at that, that's going to be another turret going down. Three turrets destroyed in under eight minutes for UC Merced. They are looking well on their way to punching a ticket to the finals. While well, the game is not yet decided, they've got themselves a, an extremely sizable lead. It is their game to lose at this point. Oh, just about 7,000 gold in their favor at 8 minutes into the game. A kill per minute going over to UC Merced. And, oh, I mean, game one was extremely close. But in game number two, UC Merced has definitely come out swinging a lot heavier than what University of Florida has been able to pull off. And, oh. Can they find themselves another fight here is the question. There's no gauntlet for 40 seconds. I don't know if they really want to go for this, but they do have their entire team here. Glimmer shot onto Tyrant. Just going to poke him with that crystal portion of it. And Yesta coming flying in with the afterburn. Was hoping to catch someone in the lane, but there was nobody there to target. So they just force the members of Florida back into their base, which means that their jungle is going to be forfeit. Over to Merced as they pick up these backs. They can't respawn. They're going to grab the minion miner as well. Or, or are they? No, it looks like they actually make the call to back off of the minion miner. So that there is no gold available for the side of Florida to pick up. Gold miner going to be just getting melted through again. A decent gold payout. The second payout that Merced has picked up this game. And they're just taking it when they can. I and mean, they're not waiting for it to be a full payout. They said, you know what? There's not really much else to take on the map. We've got an opportunity to do this. Let's just pick up a gold miner. Maybe a nice little stun there from Legend of Goat to stop this aggressiveness. But the Solar Storm does not connect. Tyrant is down. Gauntlet is going to get thrown. Legend of Goat reflex blocks a little bit too early and will get stunned up. Now it is just Vulcan Voltage left to defend. Minions are still pretty far out, but that's just these constant kills, just keeping the pressure on and just growing that seed of doubt into a full-on tree inside the mines of University of Florida. They have got to be reeling and just trying to think of what they could possibly do in order to get themselves back into this game. It is going to be a long, slow road if they are going to accomplish that feat. It would be a massive comeback, down by almost 10k gold now. As we have passed the 10 minute mark. I mean, Tyrant pretty far forward here. This could be asking for trouble. They do have 50 seconds before Gaunt will back up. But the afterburn is up right now. Legend of Goat is going down. Vulcan Voltage will be able to most likely get away from this one, but the same cannot be said for Tyrant. That is two more kills going the way of UC Merced. They're not quite able to find these aces, which is the only thing keeping them from pushing in and just kind of ending this game already. But there is just everything coming up. UC Merced here in game number two. They find a couple more kills, get a couple more jungle camps. I... I would actually really like to see them pick up the second minion miner just to really keep this pressure on, ensure that the lane is always pushing towards your opponents. Maybe even pick up a minion candy and push with those minions. Just see what kind of work you can get done. I mean, you've got three and a half minutes until Kraken is going to spawn. That's a long time if you are not going to be actively looking to push into your opponent's base of just kind of rotating around, starving them out, and building up your lead instead there's not a whole lot else that they can really accomplish in this game aside from finding out oh the gold mine almost getting stolen 
Instead, Vulcan Voltage is going to get Afterburn, but they do find a kill onto the Glaive. However, can they take down Brennan? Brennan's got himself a double kill. It is just Tyrant left. And Tyrant, I don't think, is going to be getting away from this one. One shot, one kill. will net the triple kill. And there is the ace that they have been looking for. We'll see if they can really get much done off this, though. Again, Death Timers, they're going to be respawning rather quickly. And while this will be a large number of ace buff minions, I just don't think they're able to push in quickly enough in order to find any damage onto these crystal turrets. So... It will force Florida to have to stay back and, you know, clear out all of these minions, but they've already done so. Minions, ace buff minions are now gone. Turret has taken no damage and the crystal, uh, the crystal turrets, of course. But we are just a m couple minutes away from Kraken spawning now, and it really does feel like members of UC Merced are going to be sitting back and waiting for that Kraken. And then looking to end with that siege tool. As they uh, just kind of continue to push up. Being a little bit bold here. But Legend of Goat does not have the health to answer. That is a quick kill. Now a double kill. Is this going to be another triple kill for Brennan? No. Tyrant seems to have just kind of given up on this one. They pick up the ace. But they have minions now pushing in. They could potentially look to end this game. One shot thrown out just for fun. Same with the gauntlet. The turret is down. Both turrets are destroyed. They turn their attention onto the crystal. And you see Merced. 2-0 fashion. They hand University of Florida their first series loss on the season. And they are going to be taking on American River College in the finals of the Vainglory Collegiate Star League Playoffs. Incredible performance from them. 12-0-4 from Brennan. Absolutely the MVP of this series. They were able to do a great job at winning this uh, their semifinals matchup here and making it all the way through to the finals for that rematch against American River College. Obviously going to be hoping for a better performance against them in the second time around because American River, they have just looked absolutely dominant even against UC Merced when they faced each other in the regular season. But for now, we are going to go ahead, take a look at the item builds. But that's going to do it for us here at Collegiate Star League Vainglory. Uh, the semifinals, the double header has concluded. American River College and UC Merced, both the victorious teams. And I just want to say a brief thank you to our sponsors. Of course, Band, as you've seen the ads running for Band every single week. And we would not be able to put on the kind of show we have, organize the players and teams as well as we can without Band. And of course, Twitch.tv, Collegiate Star League would not be anywhere that it is today without the help of the Twitch.tv platform. So, big thank you to both of those. Big thank you to you, the viewers. You guys are what make everything here worthwhile. And, of course, thank you to all the players that signed up for the inaugural season of the Vain Glory Collegiate Star League. There's just one series remaining as we will be crowning a champion. I believe it's next week, but I'm not 100% sure of that. If you want to know for sure yourselves, head on over to cstarleague.com. You can navigate over to the Vainglory section and find out the schedule there. You can also look at some of the other esports that Collegiate Star League handles. And there's League of Legends, Dota, uh, there's StarCraft, there's CSGO, all sorts of different games going on. If you are in college or you know will be entering college, make sure you check out C Star League. Sign up and compete. It is, I believe, completely free for you. And you have a chance to win yourself some scholarship money. And who doesn't love extra money? Especially as a college student. Being a college student, getting a little bit of extra scholarship money is always, always a very beneficial thing. So head on over there. Check it out. Get signed up for the winter season. Kicks off in January. You do not want to miss it. And until then, until the grand finals begin, I want to say thank you and have a great night.
Thank you. 